sir, and you're, you're great and bad, you know, uh, stupid, shallow astrology. I'm talking, and we'll be getting much deeper into this, into my, we're getting deep into that about the, the resonance of the moon in my presentation in the film I'm working on right now, Symbols of Power Part 4, Navigating the Maze, about the influence of the moon on the psyche and on the consciousness and of the waters of, you know, of, of consciousness itself of the waters of mem, of mim, of, of mime, of memory, of all of these things. And it goes deep, but we're not going too deep because that will be a future presentation in and of itself because it's such a huge topic of the resonance and the memory of water and the structure of cellular memory of water and um, influenced by the gravitational tides of, of the planetary bodies, of the electrical outbursts of the sun, influencing the human anatomy, the human bioelectric um biomagnetic field as well, the geomagnetic field of the earth. I mean, we could go on and on and on, but that's the astronomical, the macrocosmic aspects that influence who we are, you know, what makes us who we are, the, the resonance that shapes who we become. But also, the again, as, as I'm covering in many of these future pieces, is that the linguistic roots, literally, these roots come from phonemic roots which hold a resonance in sound which influences the cellular structure of of our physical bodies our psychosomatic structure of our bodies which is the subconscious mind in itself i mentioned this and i talked about this in last week's live stream that's part of the thing that got cut out so that's the only reason i'm bringing it up again but um but yeah so that's Another aspect that we could go deep into, but so there's astronomical, there's the macrocosmic to the microcosmic, which is the, you know, we're not going to talk about quantum anything because quantum physics is a complete farce. There, there is nothing quantum. You know, Ken Wheeler goes a lot, a lot deeper into that on his channel, which is great. You know, um, um, <clears throat> I, I'm drawing a blank on his name off the top of my head um, from the Thunderbolts project the mathematician Australian mathematician or is he New Zealand I, I forget but uh, I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head great stuff deep I mean debunking the quantum physics how you know it's Rupert Sheldrake covers that a lot about you know mathematics mathematicians you know and all of that stuff about basically you know the the mythology of, of Saint Einstein and you know derailing our actual our actual electrical science of nature itself into the realm of pure fantasy the realm of theoretical physics of you know the illusion of particles of gluons and, bo and pigs bozos and you know and weaks and wimps and strongs and you know all these ridiculous absolutely retarded you know new particles that they keep making up out of out, out of thin air you know to try and explain our electrical resonant energetic principle of nature itself which is not it can't be quantified it can't be quantized into quantum what we're referring to as quantum entanglement and all of these pseudo jargon linguistics that so many new age people will propagate because it sounds scientific it sounds so it, it will sell so many books you can sell so many books guys by by talking about quantum this and quantum that and you know uh you know we could go on and on and on that's one of the things i like to rant about you know a lot of the stuff that i used to i used to buy into you know i i'm sort of so harsh about a lot of these airy fairy things is because i was naive when i first when I was really deep into all of this stuff, the aliens, you know, the UFOs, the, the, the Bigfoots and the, you know, and the giants and the, all of this stuff, you know, all of these fringe topics and, you know, I, don't get me wrong, it's, it's incredibly entertaining, but that's, that's the extent of it. These people are profiting off of you for, for hits, for ad revenue, for clicks, for, it's all clickbait, it's all sensationalism to shape your mind and shape your perception in order to get you basically they they're just they want your money period you know end of story but i mean there is a little bit a deep underlying kernel of a small granule of truth within a lot of these things that you know most people are just not are not giving you they're not covering it and they're not giving it to you and they're not you know they're they're 
they're manipulating your mind they're sweet talking you they're speaking and soft this this will be a whole nother presentation that i've got coming up about you know the you know uh, <clears throat> you catch more you catch more worker bees in the honey trap than with bitter truths you know you 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 catch more more flies with sweet lies than you do by telling harsh bitter truths and you know we're, we'll go deep into that into the mythological lore and we'll cover many mythological lore aspects throughout Tolkien's work which is I mean just so rich so absolutely saturated with rich content about you know about the I mean Tolkien was just such an esoteric master absolutely was and I, I think this is part yeah this is part of the last week's live stream that got cut out was I was ram I was going on deep into about you know the the Steven Spielberg and George Lucas and certain other whom I consider definite light occultists definite white magicians within the Hollywood film industry so Hollywood as Jordan Maxwell so brilliantly put is the ancient druidic order it's the ancient and you know when we think of druidic orders we tend to purely just think of celtic of european druidic there is a druidic order throughout the entire ancient western world and even branching into the eastern world the ancient druidic order essentially it comes you know we could argue on and on and on about you know like in the recent video i just put out so also you know about the recent video about the ancient Vedic origins of civilization and you know when I speak of origins of civilization I'm not referring to just one source is this one source of all civilizations there was an ancient global and someone asked this in last week's live stream which I addressed as well but you know we can go on and on and on about that and people this is the problem is people are always arguing back and forth about what's the my culture is the oldest my language is the oldest you know celtic is the oldest oh i'm from i'm from turkey turkey is the oldest civilization and and oh well macedonian is the oldest language how convenient that i'm macedonian russian is the oldest civilization how convenient that i'm russian you know Hindi is the oldest civilization. How convenient that I'm that I'm Hindu, that I'm Indian. You know, we go on and on and on. Everyone bickering, and no, nothing wrong with that. It's great to you know these are these are what we need to be discussing. These are topics that need to be debated, not about politics and about you know Stormy Daniels and who you know Trump is plugging or porking you know whatever you know and whatever at the time all these trivial superficial soap opera arguments just absolute garbage complete distractions and you know geopolitics and all this garbage these are what we need to be you know things that we need to so it's good that we you know can debate and discuss these topics and that's why I you know everyone's always harping on me don't go into the flat earth stuff you can just leave the flat earth stuff alone you know is no one wants to watch it on your channel you know we don't want to we don't come to your channel to watch flat earth and stuff except for you guys that are the flat earthers and everything but that's what you you know I don't want to exclude you guys because unfortunately you have taken over like so so many aspects of of the what we could call the truth movement I don't even like to call it the truth movement movement anymore because it's not anymore it's just a complete just cesspool it's become just a complete toilet <laughs> basically it's become a, an outhouse of you know of, of just absolute sensationalism but you know I forget what the point I was going with here was but um, but yeah the the origins of what was I talking about the origins of something the origins of civilizations and of some type of linguistics I think oh Druidic order and Hollywood and all this <laughs> so many things that just my mind is it's so hard to communicate these things number one because astrologically I've got mercury in my Gemini ascendant and my mercury is conjunct Venus which again as we covered mercury is 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 quick it's quicksilver it's the it's thought it's the central nervous system the the quicksilver that runs through it, it it's, it's the messenger of the gods Hermes Mercury is is the quick one he's 
he's quick like lightning. He's the fastest planet to orbit the sun, you know, the solar deity, Sol Invictus. So, you know, he's the transference of electrical message, message, messages, electrical transmission through the motor nerves, through the sensory nervous system to the periphery, peripheral nervous system. You know, it, it transfers the impulses from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system to for motor functions and it also simultaneously transmits and I've, we've covered I've covered this deep it's all in my um, the savior within presentation on my patreon um, page which so it's all in there um, much deeper but I'm, I'm gonna summarize it here um, so you know so mercury the messenger of the gods he's he's the only you know one of the only deities who can trans transfer the messages from heaven to hell between the two realms you know between as above to so below which in the physiology the the mythophysiology is the esoteric anatomy is the central nervous system is from the core the 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 thalamus of the brain which is the core basically the central sun of our of our very nervous system of our of our consciousness of our being so and i don't want to give you know too much of this away either so that's why i'm trying to basically to you know to, to watch how i'm gonna how i'm gonna say this but <clears throat> so mercury transmits the thoughts you know from which is what the whole kundalini the the whole kundalini serpentine energy is the ida and the pingala the two the two serpents as we've covered in symbols of power part two but we'll be going much deeper into in future presentations dedicated solely to that and just to that which is more into the esoteric anatomy of the of the central nervous system the the two pathways of the nervous system the two polarities of the of the autonomic nervous system which is the the parasympathetic nervous system which is the rest and digest response and the sympathetic nervous system which is the adrenal response regulated so parasympathetic is regulated by the vagus nerve which helps us calm relax and it allows us to it's, it's basically it's the feminine principle of nature it's the negentropic side of physics of electricity so it's what allows us to calm to still to center which allows us to go inward to dive within to go within the center of that of that spiral of that vortex to allow to the involution which allows us to receive deeper insight deeper thoughts from the very central core nature of our being while the sympathetic is the external it's the outer it's the focus on the immediate which is what the two hemispheres of the brain relate to the masculine and the feminine the two hemispheres of the brain don't actually if we're, so I like to present actual medical anatomy and actual science, not just, you know, new age or ancient, you know, mysticism. Although mysticism is rooted in, there is a lot of deep, you know, hardcore science in ancient mysticism, but there's also a lot of it that is just, that's, that's, you know, we know, a lot, we, there are aspects of mainstream science that we have actually progressed a long way. As, a, as opposed to our ancient, you know, at least at least at some point along the line, that that circle got severed, that tie got severed. Um, but so, I forget where I was going, the anatomy, uh, I forget where I was going with this thought, this train of thought, but, um, so the sympathetic is, you know, it's, it's the outward, it's the immediate. So I, I was getting into the left and right hemisphere of the brain, which, <clears throat> They don't actually correspond to, you know, right hemisphere of the brain as only, you know, creative, ex you know, abstract thinking and all of that stuff. That's not how, that's not how the electrical impulses of the physiology work. You know, the, it's, I mean, I mean that's just not real actual medical science. The, the medical anatomy is that, you know, the electrical, electrical impulses transmit throughout all areas of the brain simultaneously. It's also a huge myth that we only utilize a 10% of our brain. We actually utilize 100% of our brain capacity. It's just that there are a, it's it's just that there are a lot of neural connections that are usually dormant that are that can be shut off and can be activated and can be rerouted. It's all about neuroplasticity, about how whatever patterns, whatever habits 
we have built up. Those are the pathways that are the strongest. You know, same way that we build our civilizations and our society, same way that any flow of electrical energy in nature and all of this electric universe works is that it follows a dendritic pattern, which means pertaining to a tree. It means it's the it's the branching patterns, the the patterns of rivers, streams, um, central nervous system, vascular system, which is the two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The tree of knowledge is the cerebrospinal tree, as Manly P. Hall wrote about as well, um, to credit my sources. So although I didn't come up with that, I have contributed a lot more to some very deeper aspects of the symbolism of that, which we will go into in future presentations. And I'm not trying to aggrandize myself or anything. I'm just saying that I have built upon I have, I've stood upon the shoulders of these giants and I have been able to see so much farther given all of this modern technology, these tools that we now have, this amazing software that I now have to be able to, thanks to my patrons, which I've been able to buy and upgrade um, to be able to show a lot of this, uh, the actual physiology, the actual biology and the medical anatomy of how all of this, the mythology, the symbolism can be directly found in the human anatomy, in the human body. It's so profound. I mean, I can't even begin to, I mean, it's, it's so awesome and I get so excited about it that it, 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 you know, it's hard to, you know, contain myself. So it tends to come off as kind of crazy and all this stuff, but that's why my thoughts go all over the place. That's ultimately I'm tying back into where I was going with this train of thought, but <clears throat> is because Mercury is quick, Thoth, Hermes, Quicksilver, central nervous system, these quick electrical impulses that transmit from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system of the motor functions. You know, from the impulse, from the, 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 from the thought, all things have been created. From the thought, through the word, into our physical reality as all things are created. But only our word, our speech does not create the out, the reality around us. It only creates our perception. It shapes our perception of the reality around us that we inhabit, that we, it shapes our perception. But what shapes physical reality is from thought, through the word, through our hands, through our physical actions, the only way that things are manifested into reality. Hence, manifested, manos, hand. We build things with the hands. We create with these phi ratio Fibonacci hands. The, the brilliance of the construction of the mathematical and geometric patterns of nature, of the human physiology, of the 28 phalanges of the, of the human hands, of the manos, the manifestation, the manas, the mind, the spirit, and Sanskrit, which is the, the mind manifested from the mind through the word, through the physical hands as we create our reality around us. So, I mean, so I, I forget where I was going with that, but yes, so that's the, the quickness of Mercury as getting into the, from the mythology to the, what I call the mythophysiology, the, you know, or, or what we could call the, you know, in the, in the astronomical sense, the astrophysiology of how the planetary bodies influence the human physiology, the human geometric form, the phi ratio, the, the cosmological constant of all of nature, the, the Fibonacci sequence, the phi ratio, phi spiral, you know, that creates all of these things. So, yeah, um, I've rambled, I've probably rambled on enough. Um, so again, I apologize, guys, that I, I really don't want to, like, ramble off on all this stuff, but there's so many things that I want to share, and I, I want to sort of touch on all these things without giving away too much, because that's what the full presentations are for. Um, it's, we'll be getting deeper into that. And I'm sorry I haven't brought up, I mean, I could bring up countless images and, you know, countless video clips and all this stuff to to visualize this stuff for you guys but that's not what these live streams are about maybe as we get further along it'll get more multimedia heavy as but also I can't do that because my internet connection is so slow I I think it might actually crash the stream so I'm not sure I don't want to do that but um <clears throat> but yeah let's get back into the chat here I, I hope you guys are enjoying um, what we've got um, going on on the chat on screen. Um, I hope you guys enjoy that feature, um, so that you can uh, you you know you can sort of uh, moderate your own chats for me while I'm going off on these 
um, tangents and on these rants and stuff like that. Um, okay, <clears throat> let's get back into some more questions. <clears throat> also, sorry about my my speech. It's a little bit slurred. I've got these these damn retainers that I have to wear. Um, and so my, my saliva, my salivation, my, my, my salivation tends to get caught in my, in my retainers. So it's a, it, it's really a bitch on my, oops, I probably shouldn't have said that. I hope, hope, uh, the social justice warriors don't demonetize my stream <laughs> for letting that slip. But yeah, um, but yeah, so I, I apologize for that. Um, and honestly, it's actually rubbing against my against my lip right now. It's just gonna it's gonna give me a pretty bad canker sore. I hope it doesn't. But yeah, I usually don't talk a lot while I have these things in. <clears throat> but the talking is is really rubbing my lip raw. It sucks. Um, but yeah, uh, off topic. Okay, back to the actual substance. Um, John, homie, John, Master. That's the, the hardest name to, to pronounce, dude. Mastro Ligulano. Mastro Ligulano. Mastro Lingulano. Mastro Linguini. Mastro... <laughs> the maestro of Ling Linguini. The maestro of... <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I want to bring out my stupid, ridiculous sense of humor on all of these, because that's one of the things that I, I tend to hold back. You know, my presentations are sort of more serious. I like to include some of the humor in there whenever I can. Um, so, yeah, questions. Um, again, if you guys really want, if you have some important questions, whether it's about health, something specific, health, nutrition, whether it's about linguistics, whether it's about something specific that you may have been wanting to ask about, you know, whether it's the Symbols of Power series, any specific video presentation I've done, whether it's hydropathy, hydrotherapy, um, you know, any of these things, you know, that's when it's best to do a super chat. That way I don't miss any of the stuff while I'm going on and on and on, um, rambling on about, you know, various other things going off on tangents and all that stuff. That way I don't miss anything important, um, that you may be wanting to drop. Okay. So I'm starting back at the chat where Sandman left the, um, super chat. Um, so going down from there, <clears throat> Ad meme, is it possible for etymology to give some book references, e.g. old texts, as opposed to websites? Okay, so you're wanting actual physical sources for some books to, you know, to look up and research etymology. Honestly, I don't, I don't even use any physical books or resources myself. Um, a lot of those I go to, um, a lot of them are archived on Scribed and on, you know, on PDF archives, and so... I usually refer to a lot of those. Everything I use is digital, unfortunately. But I highly encourage, we need to, and this is something I also went off on about in the last week's live stream that got cut out, um, is about the importance of preserving physical books. And I went on to a huge, off a whole huge tangent about all of that, about the preservation of physical, of physical knowledge. And that's what has really, you know, reinforce the, the, um, that I, basically the, the urge that I, I need to, you know, I need to write some actual physical books of my own specifically because, because of these things that I have discovered that nobody else has. And although, you know, some of them are sort of fringe, you know, some, of, but some of them are really profound. I mean, some of it is absolutely groundbreaking and is essential, essential core knowledge for building upon the foundation of our esoteric understanding of not just alchemy, of, of the physiology of, you know, the, of the soul and the psyche and all of these things, but actually, you know, building a, a practice upon that. But <clears throat> so that's the importance of preserving the physical knowledge is because the physical books, it's hard for physical books to be burned, you know, in this day and age, you know, governments can't just outright come out and start burning books anymore. And, um, this is where I went off on the live stream last week that got cut off was, um, 
I, there's a, a new publication, a new version of Fahrenheit 451 just got released um, on HBO. It's it's pretty good. Um, it's it's a brilliant um, it's a brilliant and chilling, disturbing documentary. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. Of, of course, it's actual sci-fi, but not really. It's actual, actually, a future documentary um, about how how hard it is to actually physically burn books nowadays. But what's happening is we are further, and the way it's going to happen is that we are pushing ourselves into a further and further digital age. We're per pushing ourselves into a further technocracy where everything is becoming digitized, whether it's our currency, our cryptocurrency. That's why I'm so reluctant. I haven't even done cryptocurrency. It, number one, it's you have to dedicate your, I, I can go on a tangent on this about the cryptocurrency itself and about the technocracy and the technology is that the cryptocurrency itself, you have to invest your entire life, all your time, all your energy, just studying how it works. You know, see, I would like to do, I, I'm open to cryptocurrency, I, and I would like to expand my platforms to be able to accept and receive cryptocurrency from you guys that, that's, you know, you're off, some of you are off grid, you know, some of you are sovereigns, and you don't even use credit cards, you don't use banking, you know, you don't have banks or any of that stuff, you just use cash, or you just use cryptocurrency, which I, that's amazing. That's how, you know, we need to move to. Although there's a counter aspect of that. My friend Carrie McCarthy on her channel, Carrie McCarpet, brilliant channel. She's absolutely genius. I can't, I, I love her so much. She is, she is so profoundly fluent in her speech, but she covers a lot about the, you know, the also, Max Egan goes deep into the, the tech, technocracy aspects of, of, you know, all of these things of the, dystopian future that we could be heading with AI and the development um, <clears throat> of these certain technologies which like any tool can be used for profound liberation also Teal Swan did a good I was I was surprised I was really surprised to see her do a really good video about cryptocurrency it was it was very intelligent it was very great stuff not the kind of stuff we usually see from from basically I guess you consider uh, you know, I don't want to say, yeah, I mean, new age personalities or gurus or whatever, but I was, I was very pleased to see that. But going off into, into basically, I would have to invest my entire time and energy into studying how, how it works, you know, not let alone just monitoring the progress. Is it up? Is it down? You know, just like your stocks and everything you, it invests like anything that you want to, you know, that you want to flourish and to thrive you have to invest all your time and energy and you know your attention you pay attention into this stuff it is your your currency flow it is your spiritual currency you are paying attention into that and you know and you you know so that's so that's what you basically invest yourself into you know and, and that's not something i i don't have time for that i don't have time to let alone to store all my backups on infinite amounts of you know on infinite amounts of hard drives on various you know storing backups upon backups i already do that enough with my videos i mean that's proving really really hard to do is i'm getting my like each one of my video files is so huge that the backups i need i need abs i need a library of just external hard drives to be able to to back up all of my videos and my film presentations while i'm working on them because they're huge i'm i'm talking like some of them are like 400 gigabyte files for one film. Absolutely huge. It's it's insane. And I mean, I need a serious, I need a serious studio and a real good, you know, maybe an Alienware um, desktop setup to be able to adequately, you know, produce the amount of speed and and the 